we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. First, here's something of interest to every traveler. Did you know that travelers far and wide have always relied on Horlicks? Long before the plane became an established fact, travelers had discovered the benefits of Horlicks. Now they find it indispensable for every conceivable kind of trip, by car and rail, by boat, and in the air. Where no other kind of food will do in cases of sea or air or train sickness, Horlicks can be taken because of its remarkable digestibility in both powder and tablet form. Horlicks, too, is convenient to carry and easy to prepare at any time of the day or night. It already contains rich, full cream milk and only needs to be mixed with water to make a nourishing lunch or supper or snack. So whatever else you take on your trip, don't forget that old-time traveler's aid, a package of Horlicks malted milk. Your druggist keeps it, you know, in both powder and tablet form, in natural and chocolate flavors. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, Abner has done just what his friends predicted he would do. He has spent and lost all of the $2,000 he received for the Jot and Down store. The only thing left from his short social splurge is the second-hand automobile he purchased a few days ago. As we left our old friends yesterday, Lum and Abner had just decided to pool their resources and to again form a partnership in the store business. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum down at Dick Huddleston's store telling Dick of their plan. Listen. Well, I'm sure glad to hear it, Lum. Uh, when did you fellas decide to do all this? Why, this evening when Abner come over here, don't you know, you was here when you come in. Said he had some business to talk over with me, and you left. Yeah, yeah. Well, he told me then that he'd lost all his money, and all he had left was just that second-hand automobile he bought. He's wondering if I knowed where he could get a job, and said he had to have something to do. Sure. So I just suggested we go back in partners again in the store business. Well, good. I'm glad to hear it. So we went over and talked to Snake Hogan about buying the Jot'em Down store back. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing to do. If he'll sell. Well, he'll sell. We talked to him. He, he made us a proposition yesterday. He said uh, he'll take $1,500 for it altogether, $1,000 cash, and take out notes for the balance. Well, that's a little more than that stock of invoice over there, though. But he paid Adner $2,000 for it, so you couldn't expect him to take much less money. No, I figured the deal was all right if we could just raise the money. That's what's bothering us now. I've got a little better than $350 in cash now. Commissions I've made on selling that stock in Squire Silvermine. Well, if Abner's broke, uh, how do you expect to raise the balance loan? Well, that's what he's doing in the county seat today. He went in there to see if he couldn't sell that automobile to somebody. Oh. We figured he ought to get somewhere around, oh, $700 for it anyway. Well, I don't know. A big car like that's pretty hard to dispose of. I don't believe he can ever get that for it. Well, he ought to. That's what he'd give her. He ain't hurt it none. The fact is, he's put a bunch of new parts in it. He improved it. New clutch and a new transmission and something like that. I don't know. Spark plugs and all that stuff. Yeah, well, tell you the truth, though, Lom, I think Abner paid way too much for it to start with. I don't know. It hits a 12-cylinder, you know, and seven passengers. Yeah. Some things come high. Caleb Weehunt says, and Caleb ought to know he's been in the blacksmith business now for years. Well, I hope he can get that much for it. I want to see you fellas get settled down in business again, go to work and start making some money instead of outstanding all you can get your hands on. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I ain't going to sell no more of that silver mining stock till I find out more about that mine, so i got to do something. Yeah. Well, I'm <laughs> glad to see you and Abner get a hold of yourselves again, too. Maybe a good thing that Abner lost his money, brought him to his senses. He's running around here wild for a while, just like a wild man. Oh, yeah, the rate he's going, no telling where he would have wound up. Yeah, the very idea of him and Grandpap going in there and betting on those horse races. I like horse races as well as anybody. But unless the fellow's got a whole lot of money that he can afford to lose, well, he better leave the betting alone. Why, sure, I tried to tell him, but, you know, he knowed it all. Yeah. Well, the only way to make money is to get out and work for it. Money that you make gambling that way, why... Well, Leave you just about as fast as it comes. I know. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's Abner coming up out there in front now. Yeah, yeah. Granny's, I hope he sold the car. <laughs> we'll just go right straight over to Snake Hogan's and take that store over this afternoon. Well, yeah, what... howdy, Dick. Have you sold up? Oh, howdy, 
Hey, Lom, I guess looking for you. Well, Abner, what kind of luck did you have? Well, I never sold a car, if that's what you mean. I tried every automobile company in there at the county seat. I, I couldn't even get an offer on them. Well, I'll be dead blamed. Wouldn't offer you nothing. Huh? No. Did you try that outfit that sold it to you, Abner? Yeah, they just laughed at me. Said they was lucky to get shut out at once. Must last five. Well, I don't reckon we'll go back in, partners, after all, then, Abner. No. Hey, yeah, don't reckon that Snake could take that $350 of yours for a down payment and let us pay him a rest as long as we can get it, do you, Long? No, I tried him on that just the other day. He said he'd have to have a $1,000 down payment. Well, why don't you try to trade that car to Snake? Offer him the car and $350 for a down payment. I granny he might take that. Well, why didn't we think of that? Might have saved me a trip into the county seat going around there worrying myself to death all day trying to find somebody to buy. I'll telephone him up right now and ask him about it. Yeah, I tell him that's a bargain, huh? I'm a car just runs as good as it did the day it was new. Well, how do you know? You never seen it when it was new. Well, no, but that's what the salesman said that I bought it from. No, I believe he'll jump at the chance. Yeah, I believe he will, too. I'll use some psychology and high pressures and one thing or another on him. When I get to Cleveland... Uh, hello, Snake. Uh, this here is Lum Edwards talking. Oh, man, it's hard out. Yeah. What's up, Huh? Well, I've got a cold. That's the reason I sound so funny, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah, about to cough my head off. <laughs> Why, well, me and Abner's been studying your proposition over, and we de- decided uh, you wasn't asking enough for a down payment on that store over there. Well, here, wait a minute, Lum. You're mixed up there. You'll have him raising the price. Yeah, we talked it over and decided to make you a better offer. Oh, goodness, thank you. Yeah. Instead of just giving you $1,000 cash for it, we're going to offer to give you $350 in Abner's automobile for a down payment. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that big 12-cylinder Sudan he's been driving around here. See what he's doing, huh? Runs just as good right now as it did the day it was new. Well, I don't see why you wouldn't. Hey, tell him he can use it to deliver groceries with, Mom. Huh? Yeah, I'd make you a good car to deliver your gro... Oh, for goodness sake, Sandra. He tells us the store he wouldn't have no groceries to deliver. Yeah, that's fine. Oh. Uh, just to be honest, Snake, that's the only way we can buy it. No, we ain't got the $1,000 and can't find no way to raise it. No, I'll be putting a nickel off my life. He's on it. You wouldn't be interested in taking in the car for a part payment, huh? Well, I... Guess the deal's off in, for that's the best we can do right now. All right, Snake. Goodbye. It wasn't good, <coughs> huh? No, acted like he's insulted for it, even offering such a deal as that. Where about Dick go? Why, he's up there sorting the mail. Dad blame that Snake Hogan. Might have old he'd be hard to deal with. That's the stubbornest one human i ever seen in my life. I don't know what to do hardly on now. Well, you can't hardly blame Snake, Abner. He ain't got no use for a great big car like that. No. My dog is I wish we had the money. We could just use it that car for a deliver car ourselves, you know. Yeah, make a good deliver car, all right. Big as it is, why, we wouldn't have to make but one deliver a day. Just stack all the orders in there at once and go around from house to house. Yeah, yeah that thing's might not big enough to haul a whole store around. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we can just put the whole stock in there. <laughs> just drive around from house to house and let them pick out what you want. Yeah, what you want. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Huh? Be quiet. D- don't move. What's the matter? What's the matter? Nothing, nothing. Just sit down. I believe I'm getting an idea. Oh, hey, you look like you're going to sleep. you got your eyes all squinted up there. Well, I'm studying that when I do that. Oh. Yes, sir, it'll work. Hey, right, Granny, why didn't we think of that sooner? I don't know. I ain't even thought of it yet. What is it? That car, delivering with it, carrying a whole store around, driving around from house to house, and let them pick out what they want that way. It's the greatest idea I ever had in my life. Well, I wish you'd calm yourself down and explain what you're talking about. We don't care where Snake sells us that got down store or not. We don't. You can take that big car of yours, take that Sudan body off of it, and build a regular store on wheels. 
Oh, I believe I'm beginning to catch on. Why, well, sure, we can take that money I've got in the bank and buy a stock of merchandise with it. Yeah. Instead of the women folks having to come to our store to do their trading, we can take the store right to them. Why, sure? Drive right up in front of the house and blow the horn, and they can walk right out there and get the store and select what they want. <laughs> yeah, but now the trouble is, um, some woman get in there and... By the time she's got what she wanted picked out, why, well, we'd more likely be a couple of miles down the road. Oh, no, no, we'll stop right there in front of her house till she gets done trading and then go to the next house. Oh. Think what a convenience that is. Yeah. You don't have to get dressed up and come all the way downtown here. Don't lose no time that way. Just come out to the front gate and come in the store and get what they want and go right back in the house. <laughs> you mean just tear a whole store right there in the car, huh? Why, sure. We can get Caleb Wee Hunt to build a body to go on that car of yours with shells in it and everything, just like a regular store. Yeah, that can be sure. Why, sure we could. You saw tourists go through here with regular houses built on cars and trucks. Yeah. We'll just build a general store on there, handle everything. Granny's, we can have stores in Pine Ridge and Cherry Hill and Odin and Mount Ida and all around here. Well, we better just get one started first, hold on. Well, we'll do it all with the same one. See, we can work Pine Ridge in the morning and then drive on over to Cherry Hill, be through there by 1 or 2 o'clock, and then spend the rest of the afternoon in Odin and Mount Ida. Yeah, yeah. And just, just like having a chain of stores. Well, Sir Lum, that's the best idea I ever hear that you have. Yeah, come on back here, Dick. I've just had an idea it's going to make me and Abner both millionaires. <laughs> We're going to have a rolling grocery store. Yeah, a grocery store on wheels. Well, Lum seems to have stumbled upon an idea now that is something new in the mercantile business. If you can't get the customers to come to the store, take the store to the customers. And now... Two opinions of the Horlick weight control plan. First, Mrs. Harrington. I first decided to use the Horlick weight control plan after hearing you mention it over the radio. You said that 25 women in a recent test of the plan lost nearly four pounds each in three weeks. That was enough for me. I started the plan right away and found it just as effective as you said. And now, Mrs. Lennox. I was attracted to the Horlick weight control plan because so many people had told me it was safe. Other plans I had tried had left me feeling weak. I lost weight at the expense of my health. I began following the plan two months ago, and I'm still using it. It brought down my weight to just where I wanted it, without any ill effect whatever. I use it now to keep my weight just where it is. This Horlick weight control plan you've just been hearing about consists simply up drinking a glass full of Horlicks every noon in place of your regular noontime luncheon. By doing this, you cut down on your daily caloric intake with a consequent loss of weight. Excess calories, you see, are a common cause of excess weight. So if you want to cut down on your weight or keep it where it is, by all means follow the Horlick plan. You can get Horlicks at any drugstore in both natural and chocolate flavors. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all goodbye until Monday at this time.